This is Abnormal Entertainment. Two, three, four. Walk into the tunnel just to find the light. Hunted for all demons, looking for a fight. Looked up at the stars, seemed to go forever. There must be a way it all fits together. Fell into the quicksand, held on to the vines. Never could quite color, stay within the lines. Feels like I have wings, I can fly wherever. This is just a way it all fits together. Finally saw the world through rose-colored glasses. Gonna share my journey to small and large masses. Give up on my life, no sir, me never. This is how I put it together. This is how I put it together. This is how I put it together. Hey everybody, welcome. This is Daniel Garza and this is another episode of Put It Together. I'd like to start as usual thanking my producer, Mr. Kevin Moyers, for all his help and support. Inviting everybody to join us at abnormalentertainment.com where you can find all the shows on the network. Go check that out. You can follow this uh, podcast at... Uh, Put It Together Podcast on Facebook. I lost my Delta for a minute. You can also check us out at Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube where you can find videos, pictures, and other info about the show, about myself, about my guests. So go check those out. Find them and follow them. Become uh, friends. And you can get updates on everything that's going on with Little Mexican Productions. Uh, I'd like to welcome my guest today, uh, Taylor Doretti. Yes. How you doing, sir? Hi. I'm doing very well. How are you? Cool, good. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Thank you. So Taylor and I made because, met because um, he was working for an, a company and I was going to do some work with the company and uh, we kind of bonded because you had yeah. a really cool spiritual vibe about you. <laughs> um, I was like, oh my god, this little white hippie boy. Like, <laughs> right. But you were uh, you you kind of caught my attention and I was like, yeah. okay. And then we lost track of each other. You left the company. Yep. And and then one day you just messaged yeah. me, and yeah. I was like, who is this? Yeah. <laughs> um, how have you been? Uh, doing quite well. Yeah, it's been uh, quite an interesting journey in my life since uh, when we met and yeah. all the way up to now, and then even a couple weeks ago when we got together and, and what's happening now in life. Because so. yeah. I was just coming off cancer stuff when we I met, think so. right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what was happening. Yeah, I remember you brought Pin Dulce to the office there, and it was me, Ryan, and you, and we had a little meeting up there. So that was probably what, that was um, like fall of 2017, like probably right around like September, October. Is that when, how long you were there about? Well, I was there from July of 17 until January of this year, of 18. Okay. And so I was there about six months. I thought it was longer than that, so I feel like I've met you longer. It felt like it, yeah, it has. Um, I think as as I mentioned once before, we might have like passed each other when I used to work at the Chakra Shack for a couple months that's right that's right yeah yeah Yeah. wow (laughs) so for those of you that uh have followed my story uh you know i worked at the chakra shack in laguna beach when it was on the north side right and then i quit and it moved to the south side of laguna yeah and that's when you worked there so i probably did see you but again i was like this little white spiritual surfer boy (laughs) what else what else So he thinks he's going to take my place here. Right. Uh, <laughs> I was only there for, for two months, actually. Really? Yeah. I got I got the clear, like, you need to leave. It's time to go. You know, I, I got there. I went there for a reason. That reason was fulfilled, and it was time to move on. Isn't it interesting? Because I yeah. tell people the same thing. I was there for eight months. Yeah. And I feel like I, I worked there long enough to get the knowledge that I needed there. Right. And then just go and... Yeah, there was someone very specific that I was supposed to meet there, and then I met that person, and, and life carried me on into a different direction. Well, we, we're going to so hear some of that story. Yeah. So, yeah. Taylor Doretti, tell yeah. us how you put it together. Oh, man. Well, um, I didn't... 
I don't think that I that I put it together. I think that that's a constant process. So I'd like to say I'm putting it together, yeah. and um, and still with that, I, I don't ever think it's it's truly possible to completely put life all together. Um, we as humans tend to think that. We, we approach everything and we want it to like be logical and make sense and be really rational. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, it's such a kind of a, a grander scale that, that that belief is just an illusion, you know, that, that helps keep us entertained and focused and, and not question all these deeper aspects of, of, of who we are and, and, and essentially what we, what we can really become aware of. So I haven't really... Yeah, in my own words, I haven't put it together. I'm putting it together, um, and I think I'll be doing that lifetime after lifetime until you know, uh, who knows what happens. Because I get this, <laughs> I get this vibe from you, like, like you're knitting this never-ending quilt for people, or yeah, or this scarf for people. Like, like yeah, uh, I've been told this growing up. Like, I'm, I'm a connector of people, and I sure I connect. I get that vibe from you. Does that make yeah. sense? Totally. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy... I like people, and I like enjoying um, helping other people get to where they want to be in life, in their development, in their questionings, in their search, um, in their careers, no doubt. And that's always been something that's come very natural and inherent to me. And... Um, over the past several years, it started to kind of take a, be a little bit more of a prominent theme. Um, whether that's people asking me for help through business and, and marketing, or whether that's just having casual conversations with strangers about the nature of existence. Um, I really resonate with the philosophy and perspective of dreaming, that, that life is simply but a dream, and that we are consistently dreaming moment to moment, lifetime to lifetime, and, and that what we think is real is just this um, external projected screen or movie, and, and we're just kind of characters, you know, playing a role. Um, so we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later, because that, that, pers- that path, that philosophy is, is a... Is a core pillar of, of, of my beliefs. So, yeah. touching on, on something that you said, like developing people, and then yeah. where, where did that start? Because a lot of these traits, I think people don't right. realize that a lot of these traits don't just happen when we turn teenagers or adults. Right. We bring them with us. Yes. Where did, the, where did you first realize that you enjoyed helping people develop into their true selves? Oh, man. Um... Probably when I was like five, six, like really young, like really, really young. Um, my the first ever thing that I wanted to be growing up was a pastor. I grew up in a very conservative Christian family, and I had a lot of very like in, like spiritual and religious ingrained beliefs and directions as a very young child. And um, and I always remembered trying to. I was always, I would always counsel adults and other people from like a very biblical and Christianic perspective of like, oh well, you think this, well try this. Like God talks about this, and, and all these different little things that um, that you learn in Bible school and Sunday school and things like that. Um, but at the core, at the same time of that, I was very enamored with the mystical and with the science fiction, the quote unquote science fictional. Um, I learned to read from Star Wars books and comic books. And um, when I saw Star Wars for the first time, it inspired something within me and, and kind of helped wipe away a veil of, of, the, of what I thought was possible. And, and so from that young age, I just always th- knew in, like, in my core, in my heart, that there was something more that there was something beyond um, this physical world that, that we live in and, and the reality that that we agree upon. Um, and so I just always carried that with me, even when I forgot all about that, even when I ditched religion and, and um, the mundane never really, you know, 100% 
felt like totally real, or like what we were being presented was just not all that there was. Now, I mean, I just learned this. I didn't didn't really learn it. I I reheard it because I heard it a long time ago. Sure. Um, When it comes to the religion and the spiritual, because I was raised Catholic, and uh, I honestly believe that when you're raised in a very religious family, not necessarily conservative, but religious family. Yeah. You never really outgrow the religious part because you you'll always know right. it. Right. Like I always tell people, I'm 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 a uh, what's the word? I'm 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 Catholic by guilt, right? Because I I still I mean I believe in God. I believe there's something bigger than me out there, right? Uh, I I pray. I believe in the saints. I, I, I Christmas and the holidays and yeah. Jesus was you know Jesus uh, sure. came back to life. But I like the I, I use the word pageantry. I like the pageantry. I like the 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 moral of the stories that I learned in religion. Yeah. Because if you if you take away the sarcasm of our thoughts or right. our um, the evil side, I'm, I lost the word right now. If you just listen to the story for a story, yeah, you can find the moral to it, and you're like, oh wow, that's that's really awesome. Right. Um. I'll say this, like for instance, the, when Jesus came back to life, that for me was his second birth, per se. Sure. And when I got clean and sober, and I emerged from rehab, right. I came out a different man. Right. So that was my second birth. Yeah. And, and that's why I considered you know, my AA birthday, I think a lot of people do without knowing that, Yeah. we have our belly button birthday and we have our AA birthday right because we come back to life yeah and i do celebrate both of them yeah there's <laughs> in 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 vedic philosophy or in, in yoga there's the sanskrit word called the amkara and the amkara is the created self um and this and that's you know that's a great what you just shared is a great example of that of that word you you came out you went through something and you came out with a totally new created self of who you were and how you interact with the world how you perceive how you interpret and what you do and who you are right so i that's a very like yeah, yeah and that, then that's, that's a great thing and then i don't this is my personal opinion so send emails or messages if you want but my personal opinion <laughs> is that you have to go through some spirit, some religious life to get to a spiritual life. I, I don't think you can get there without understanding at least the basic concepts of, of some religion, of some teaching. Because then spirituality just kind of falls into place. You're like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Angels, spirits. Right. Blow out candles at my birthday. Make a spell with a candle. Like, right. it, it all kind of like falls into place together. Does yeah, that make can, sense? You can see parallel perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, um, you know, having, uh, you know, religion can be great for where people are in their own development and where, where they are in their own soul's awareness. Um, it can be very helpful for some. Um, it was for me growing up. It helped me kind of develop a relationship with with something unseen and have faith in something more and so i I do kind of agree with you with that part that that you don't really fully ditch the the what what kind of structure religion gives you you know right it gives you a type of structure um that in your mind to be able to perceive and understand and and experience things so i I do agree with you on, on that aspect of things um i think where Religion becomes a pitfall or an illusion or, or in a trap that kind of halts or slows down progress um, is is when people take everything as as like the concrete fact, yeah. right? And, and it, like it has to be done this way, right? And on, I went through that with studying different mystical traditions too. Um, I was like, oh. This you have to do this thing this way, and if you don't do it this way, it's you won't re- achieve the same result. And then it's like once you like you encounter um, uh, a, a teacher or you, you encounter someone that's extremely advanced and like very conscious, and they can produce the same result with 
something completely different, you're like, wow, like that is very close minded of me to like think it's only can be done yeah. this one way, you know? Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, I just got trapped, like caught up in my own like ego trap kind of thing. <laughs> and I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think getting caught up sometimes is a bad thing. It's when you act <laughs> negatively towards it. When it causes problems, which is like these extremist religious people, we're not going to get into that. But, right. But that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, hopefully not the wavelength the conversation goes. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> but um, I went to a conference where they were talking about cooperation, and it made me right. think about my my person, myself, how yeah. I cooperate with me. Yeah. And how my spiritual teachings and my uh, spirituality or energy teachings all collaborate together yeah. to make to be the best person I can. Right. Not just for me, but for the work I do in spirituality sure. and energy work. And yeah. Then, so, cool. So we're, 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 for all of you out there, they're like, what are they talking about? That's cool. If you ain't religious, you're not going to get our conversation. So, there you go. <laughs> um, so as you as you grow up yeah. and you start thinking for yourself. Yeah. And shocker. I know, right? Kids do that. <laughs> you kids. It's not just a white thing. Um, Got it. How, <laughs> how, and I'm going to just ask about how yeah, confused, how alive, how lost were you? Yeah. Who did you find within you? Well, um, I, it's, 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 you know, it kind of was an interesting turn of events because it was kind of both the mix of um, not really f- totally fitting in with, like, other kids in, in, like, social circumstances. It also had to do with the different choices and, like, the way that my parents decided to raise me, to discipline me, to educate me. Um, and I never really quite felt like I fit in any, anywhere. And so when my family moved to Orange County when I was in eighth grade, I made a decision to like only focus on fitting in and being cool. And that was like entirely like my focus when I was in eighth grade. And at that point, like that was the beginning of like six years or like four to six years of not knowing myself whatsoever. Um, became an entirely different person, different cares like stopped really doing well in school like almost intentionally um just tried to really mimic and copy what other people were doing and like what made them um what made them on the end like a cool and like a social Popular. yeah exactly like in the social hierarchy and i didn't really understand it because i'm like these people are like so unintelligent like how is this going on <laughs> It, it, it He's a, trying not to use the word yeah. dumb, <laughs> but so I'm gonna I'm gonna use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it was really interesting, and I and I like totally lost myself there for a bit, and like came became somebody else, um, somebody that I'm not necessarily proud of. But like you know, like you said, you had to go through these things to really kind of see another side of the world and experience a different perspective. And so, um, uh, I was still like going to church and still trying to figure that thing out, and then. When I was, like, 16, I totally was, like, man, like, like screw this. Like, this is, like, there's so much hypocrisy going on. Like, I was bullied more in, in my church, church and Sunday school than I was almost at school at that point. I, I can agree. I can you relate know? to that, yeah. And so um, it just didn't make sense. I was, like, this is wrong. F this, I'm out, you know. And so, um, and then that's when I started, like, partying, experimenting with, like, alcohol and weed and... How old were you then? Uh, I smoked weed for the first time when I was like 16, okay. and it was my sophomore year of high school, and um, and then I drank like for the first time when I was 17. So I smoked weed before I tried alcohol, and um, and yeah, just like started like tried like started trying to party, and just didn't really know what that was or why it felt good or you know anything like that, and so. Um, Kind of went through that little cycle, and then here's the thing, like, I was a chubby kid growing up. I was, like, like 160 pounds in fifth grade, you know? Like, I was a big kid. Wow. And so, um, when I was, like, end of my sophomore going into, really my junior year of high school, um, I lost maybe, like, 15 pounds over the summer and grew a couple inches, and started taking water polo a little bit more seriously, and I came back and, like, every single girl who was, like, fr- like totally friend-zoned me was, like, 
like, I know. Y- exactly, like, hello, Taylor. Like it, like, it was, like, almost out of a movie kind of thing. And I didn't really know how to deal with that kind of attention at all. You know, growing up in a Christian family, they don't really teach you, or in the Christian church, they don't teach you about sexuality or how to, how to no. deal with that at all. They're like, wait till marriage. Of course. Some nice Christian yes. girl you'll court for a couple of years, and you'll get married, and it will be great. And God will bless <laughs> you forever. And, like, I totally thought that's the way, like, it was supposed to go. And... And then girls are like, oh, like, let's go make out. And I'm like, oh, my God, sure. <laughs> like, whatever that means, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so, like, totally didn't know what was going on. And, um, and you know, after the whole high school thing, like, I was, I had a core group of friends that we, like, threw parties. And, like, we started developing our own kind of, like, popularity and like our own pop like we were like the cool kids are like dumb like we're gonna have our own popular groups of like the smart kids and like the the rejects essentially and so like we just had so much fun you were like the summer growers yeah totally like because totally, I, I had friends like totally. that growing up they yeah were, like you go away for summer and they come back and you're like totally changed you're like yeah, exactly yeah like, what did you eat like yeah yeah because yeah. i was not a summer grower yeah i, I, I slowly <laughs> developed <laughs> and it's, a, a slow blooming flower yeah like, yeah like a cartoon like my head was bigger than my yeah, body right my late my arms were long yeah but yeah <laughs> yeah but it, figure out it deal with this world from like 13 to 16 i didn't i yeah. I'd morph into who i am now i have not sure. gotten any taller and you can hear my voice it never really developed yeah i forever have had the peter brady voice yeah, yeah so but right. <laughs> yeah but for those of you who are watching and um, before listening to the podcast you're like well what does this dude look like well we'll have the video <laughs> on youtube because uh you know from the gay perspective he is adorable so yes, that was really <laughs> tall, blonde, and, and blue eyed. And so, if you're if you're only listening to this, you've got to go watch or, or go follow him on, yeah. on Facebook, and, <laughs> and you'll be like, "Shut up, Taylor," because <laughs> that's what I'm thinking right now. Like, "Shut up, poor you. Yeah, hard, w- what a hard life you must have had." <laughs> In fact, this yeah. conversation is over. We're going to do... <laughs> You're like, screw the rest of your story. We're doing 20 minutes of podcast <laughs> and we're done. Yeah. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah cool. It. All right. So... Okay, yeah. so you more you're so, the, yeah, so I like more you're, you're the swan now. Uh, yeah, something like that, and like still an awkward swan, like flapping one wing make, and like, make, you know, making out with girls. Yeah, and just, you're not sure what the bases are. But no, you're, not at all. You're just no, running. No, oh yeah, like no, not at all. Like I had no clue. Like you know, yeah, and so like okay. totally didn't know what like anything meant or you know. So how was your relationship with yourself at that point? Uh, I didn't even know that there was, that you could have one or there was one. Okay. Um, I was very much like, fuck the world. It's me. Yeah. Ah, was like it? whipping it around. You just kind of <laughs> like hanging it, like just kind of, you know, like I'm going to show everyone, you know, and I have something to prove. And that's kind of what it was like. But there was still, you know, there was still a part of me that had this, um, this like, this like innocent like this innocence like this heart you know and and i i think that's something that even at the darkest points of my life and even when i thought i lost myself there was still this i don't know it almost felt like i could still had a connection to my heart no matter how dark things got it's like i could always still tell when something was off or wrong, wrong you know and so um my relationship with myself was not there you know i i Completely gave up religion. I was like smoking, partying, and and um, then I just got more and more defiant when my parents like really tried to like, structure my life and my future. And they're like, "You're going to go to this school, and you're going to do this, and you're going to major in this," and um, you know. And so I was really into any kind of like art and music stuff growing up. Like I was in theater. I wanted to be an actor. I loved acting and I like liked painting and I wanted to learn about photography and and pretty much like all the medias and all the arts. And like, that's what I wanted to like really focus and spend time on doing. And then I was like, well, those kids aren't cool. So forget that. And then I got into high school and I was like, well, I want to try those electives. And my dad was like, no, you have to do these. And so like my, my parents really structured what type of education I got through high school. You know, almost every class that I had was picked out by them. I didn't, oh, wow. I didn't really get to have a say in what I what I took for the most part. And so 
Um, and so, yeah, they started to get a little bit more stricter. Um, my senior year of high school, they put me into an outpatient rehab program for, for smoking weed and, and not following God's rules was, was their rationale to it. And so, um, you know, at this point, um, I was not by any means like a stoner or Spicoli or like any like TV personality refer like, you know, if you're anything like that, you know, I just like kind of tried it a dozen or two dozen times and I just found, you know, I liked it. And so, um, my parent, it really freaked my parents out. Like really, sure. really yeah. freaked them out, you know, especially when they found like a pipe in my room, they're like, Oh my God, dude, like just totally freaked out. And so I'm 17, I'm in an outpatient rehab program with kids 14 through 18 that were doing like heroin and oh, wow. like ecstasy and methamphetamine and, and just like, I'm in there like, one, I like couldn't believe it. I was actually in this like situation and like, like totally not taking it seriously at all and like, um, and it was almost like it was a joke to me. I was like, when do my parents think like this is going, like when when is like the all right see what could, like like all right did that teach you a lesson like i was waiting right. for like a Punk. Like, exactly something like that <laughs> and like they were totally serious about it you know and so um you know and every, you know they have a you know every right to be parents are very concerned about their kids and so when they do things that they don't understand or they're not familiar with or they're not educated about it like Right. You know, their their minds go to like the dark yeah. places of the world. Yeah. Like we, your, all, like, your pot was do. my sexuality. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, and so, um, and then when I turned eighteen, when I was a senior, I was still. I turned my birthday is in November, um, and uh, I turned eighteen at the beginning of my senior year, and they put me, and then I got transferred out of the teen program into the adult program, and that's where. I started to learn about all these other different substances and things and, and like thought like thought patterns. Like like there's this one guy who was like a, a total like deadhead, like and, and I didn't know what psychedelics were at all and, and I learned about them from him and and, um, and just like learned about all these different things and I was like, Okay, like not everyone's like a hardcore addict, but some people kind of go on the crazy end with these right. things. And it's just like still like not a place an eighteen year old like high school kid like needs to be at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like totally not. Like a lot of scarring experiences in there. And so um at the same time they're like, Okay, well if he's in rehab and my parents are like or and like we, we they, they're like, Okay, well he's getting taken care of on the rehab end with like professional help, like we'll call in the religious background and then like I remember coming home from the end of uh, Hell Week from water polo. Um, before the season began, we'd have like a week and a half of just like two, three workouts a day, like wow. grueling things. And so I came back from this Ironman that we participated in, and I like walk into my house, and there's like four pastors from like the three different churches that I had gone to, and I'm like, what the hell is a, a religious going? intervention? <laughs> It's dead serious. And then I go to my room, and everything was taken out of my room. Everything. Every, like, all the furniture, pictures, clothes, all that was left was a sleeping bag and a pillow. And, uh... If Jesus could do it, <laughs> so can you. Exactly. Damn it. Exactly. So I'm, like, there. I'm, like, all right, what's going on, guys? Oh, my God. And they're, like, Taylor, is there anything you'd like to tell us? I'm, like what like this is what we found in your room i'm like well these are like the adhd medications you guys prescribed me and this is some weed and like this is a pipe and they're like we're really concerned for your future with god and and it just like it just it it became like a very like religious the themed intervention and um and i remember like sitting there like trying not to laugh because um I didn't like, you know. Even myself now, it it, the, the re, it was probably a good thing I went through some of those things, right? Because like, kind of was like showed me like you know the steps not to take in life when it comes to curiosity and experimentation. But, um, yeah, it was just yeah, it was it was really interesting. You know how the saying goes: curiosity kills the cat. Yeah, and turns boys gay. So, <laughs> exactly. so yeah, 
<laughs> That's what happened to me. I was just yeah. curious. <laughs> one day you're whoopsie daisy. One day you're playing football with all the guys. Next thing you know, you have you're dating one of the guys. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Um, sorry, mom. Sorry about that. But I don't do drugs. Um, right. So. So how does? Okay, because you're you're saying you're you're pretty lighthearted about. Oh, situation. totally. Yeah. You were pretty And then used to be that then. way. I was like super bitter, like super pissed. I was going to say, my how, for years. there you go. That's yeah, what I was going to ask. Super pissed. And so the reason why is, um, so I kind of like straightened up, like cleaned up just for the sake of like not living in prison. The senior, my senior year of high school is like kind of what it felt like, like having to come home right after school. Um, having um, to earn back all of my clothes and, and privileges. Like, they literally gave me three gym shorts, uh, five pairs of underwear and socks, and, like, a couple shirts. And that's what I had to wear the first, like, month of school until I earned back the privileges of getting, oh God. Uh, like, nice clothes. Right? Like, crazy. And, like, my parents are like, yeah, what were we thinking? We read it on, like, a Christian parenting blog, and we thought it was a good idea. So... And so Focus on the Family is not the best resource for parenting kids. I didn't so, say... But, but, you PSA moment. <laughs> exactly. Like, like, focus on the family. Dr. James Dobson. Like, you guys are, like, stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Stop. stop. Like, it doesn't work. Yeah. Jesus would not approve. Trust me. I, I remember when my parents found out that I was drinking. I was like, well, didn't Jesus make water into wine? <laughs> yeah. Talk about defiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, and he, Jesus hung out with prostitutes, gamblers, sinners, like, you name it. And, you, you know, know so. science says that one out of every ten men is gay. There were twelve apostles in Jesus. <laughs> Come on. One of them. <laughs> and I'm just going to say, I'm just going to put out that Jesus was the one that went and picked all 12 of them. Right. So, so you know he had some good so, ass taste. So there. I'm just going to say, and I've seen the... Well, seen, it's really interesting. I've like, you know, I, I've seen a couple of conspiracies. Uh, I just call them conspiracies because I have no idea if there's any facts. But um, one of the apostles in a couple different translations of the Bible, they it, he is called... Um, I think it was John. I think it was like John, the man who Jesus loved, or something yeah, like that, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. I, there, there's a there's a couple of movies out there that yeah, depict the, a relationship, yeah. some kind of like bisexual relationship, yeah. and then also like having a child with Mary Magdalene and, and things like that, you know. So, I, yeah, we can get into a yeah, whole. You know, this is another like, show. It's like a totally another ball game there. So, so right, how how right, do you overcome? Well, right when I graduated high school. Two weeks after I graduated high school, um, my sister had like told my parents that she saw me smoking weed, which wasn't true because I, yeah, like wasn't true. Um, wow. She like pretty much lied to my parents and to like get me in trouble. And so, um, and so. so that doesn't sound very Christian. No, not at all. No. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Um, she thought she was doing a good thing or something. And so my parents, like, gave me, like, a, a, a weed test. And um, at that time, like, I was smoking occasionally. But, like, <laughs> but not when she saw not you. Not when she saw me. Yeah, seriously. Let's clarify this for Let's the sister. Let's clarify that. Yes. yes. But, but no. Yeah. So they kicked me out two weeks after I graduated high school with, like, 80 bucks wow. in my bank account. Um, I crashed at friends' houses. Um, for like the next six months and then my friend uh, my friend's dad took me in um, he was an ex-con turned like pastor and so oh, wow. he was like you know like I don't agree with what your parents are doing and like they're like but I know that you're not a bad kid you're not violent so like I want to help you out that's pretty so, cool very cool yeah he saved like definitely like saved me from being homeless at, like the age of like 18 for sure and so um, uh, college plans kind of got canceled at that point my parents were like if you want to go to school you have to pay for it and we'll pay you back if you get all A's and so um, wow they were really on that bartering oh they were thing. yeah they were carrot and stick like like Christians really like parents, like carrot and stick. Wow. Um, at least Christian parents in my, my experience. Um, and so, yeah, so at that point, I was like, told them, like, screw all relationship, like, you're dead to me, pretty much. Like, you know, I, I didn't want anything to do with them. Um, and so, um, 
we came to like this little like little agreement. I'd live at the house for a little bit, and so they allowed me back in after like I, like I think it was like a year or something like that. And then I got an apartment, and I was going to community college. I was lifeguarding. I was starting to like develop my own place in the world, and um, then at community college, I was like, you know, I don't think you need to go to school to make money. So I, I dropped out. I started an online business. I started learning how to make money doing digital marketing. And so, at the age of of twenty, I was making some money online. I, I had a, a friend of mine who was teaching me kind of the finer ropes of things, and so that was kind of my entry into entrepreneurship um and i through when i was like 18 19 i started like getting curious about meditation and i was like you know what is enlightenment is this a real thing and so i just started like looking at all these other different perspectives of the world and trying to understand spirituality and um i had a lot of experiences that people like i didn't really know how to explain at all and so um one thing just kept leading to another, and it's the way that synchronicity in life does work. And um, I was 21. I moved up to Orange, started dating this uh, amazing, amazing woman um, who was going through yoga teacher training at the time. And her mom uh, was a Tibetan Buddhist teacher and also a dean of psychology at a private university up in uh, wow. up in California. And so, me and her were dating for like the next we dated for like the next two years and. She really helped introduce yoga into <clears throat> my life, not only like the physical practice, but oh, like understanding like the spiritual philosophy of yoga, um, not like what it's commercialized now. But yeah, you know, just like I started like learning about the sutras and, and started applying some of those things to my life. And then, you know, her mom, um, her mom, when she was like our age at the time, early 20s, had a, a mystical teacher who was who could perform miracles and, and do and perform siddhas and do a lot of these things. And so she was like, yeah, like if you're curious about this stuff, know it, it is real and you should just meditate and trust yourself. And, and, you know, if this is a path for you, you'll be led down it. And so I was like, all right, cool. Like, you know, like if I can see someone levitate, like game, <laughs> like I'll do whatever, yeah, yeah. you know? And so, um, yeah, so I started meditating and, and experimenting with that, and um, and then I, you know, starting to find success in business. I was working for a great company. I was running and managing an office up in the valley, and had like twenty five, thirty people like working for me on the sales team at the time, and and so I was starting to like kind of figure it out, quote unquote. Um, there was still like this draw to like really find myself still because I still felt right. like. Like, who I was trying to be was who I thought I needed to be based on just external projections. And, Social and, yeah, norms. Exactly, yeah. right. And then um, beginning of 2016, I left that company, was like, I'm just going to do everything that I was interested in as a kid. And so I started really getting into, like, music festivals, and I started, like, reestablishing a relationship with music. I started dancing for the first time in, like, 15 years. and And then... Um, started getting interested in photography and videography and art and media and all of those things. And um, I found uh, a, a, my first teacher, uh, my first teacher of mysticism at the time. And the first time meditating with her. <coughs> Excuse me. Good boy. We're getting into the deep of it, guys. Yeah. He, um, he needs water. You, you right. some more water? Uh, in a bit. I'll be yeah. fine. I'll let the ice melt a little bit. So... Uh, first time meditating with her, the entire room dissolved into light, and and there was nothing but just gold light. There was no structure, no form. Um, nothing. So in this in this tradition, you meditate with your eyes open, and um, I just read about that. Yeah. Okay. It's a type of eye gazing. It comes from tantric Buddhism, um, not tantra and like the. Sexual form that we think of because it's only one. That's not what I read. Yeah, that's not it. That's not the video. Out the door. That's (laughs) not the video I watched. (laughs) No, yeah, but no, yeah. I I was just continue, but I was just reading something about that. Yeah, so it's um, it's a it's a mystical practice from tantric Buddhism and uh, from more of an esoteric lineage and. um, When you meditate with with a teacher with someone that has a 
very high reservoir containment of personal power and, and, and energy. They can literally transmit what they're experiencing in meditation to you. It takes away all of your... Um, it basically dissolves your mental structure mm. to where you perceive reality directly. And, and we know that reality is not really physical, but this is just the manifestation of something more. And so you experience that, you experience eternity directly and it's different layers of reality. And so, um, I'm like sitting there and I'm like, this is it. Yes. Like, this is what I've been looking for my entire life. And then all these memories started coming back to me of when I was a kid and I used to, that used to happen as a kid. I would sit there, be playing with my, playing in my room and, and the room would start dissolving into light and I would start seeing colors and things and, and all these like memories that I just had like no idea were there start coming back and I was like, all right, well, this is what's more real than anything I've ever experienced in my entire life. So there's something to this, and this is what I'm going to dedicate my life to find. And so um, at that point, like, I didn't know if I was going to, like, be the stereotypical millennial, like, peace out world, I'm going to go travel the you world. You would not be sitting myself. here. No, not you know, or anything <laughs> like that. Like, I didn't know what was going to happen at all, but I knew that there was something more. I'd found what I was looking for, and I was still trying to figure it out because... The number one thing for me that I absolutely want um, is freedom in, in all of its different expressions. And whether that you want to look at that as enlightenment, whether you want to look at that as, as freedom of like time and, and, and financial freedom, resource, like be able to have like resources to do things. And like freedom is what I, is what I seek and, and being able to help other people achieve that. And there's varying steps to that, right? And so... Um, I was still like, okay, well, how do I pursue this spiritual interest and path? But also, how am I? How do I um, play the play by the rules in our capitalist society? You know, how do mm -hmm. I how do I become wealthy enough to not have to do the, to play the rat race, right? And right. so, I didn't know like what I was going to do because I had had a lot of success in things. I knew what I was good at, but I didn't know how to apply it. I didn't know how to like start a business of my own or anything, and so. And I think a lot of people, let me go put note. Hold sure. On, let me pause. I think one of the things that people miss out on is the fact that just because you, you play in the rat race for a while doesn't yeah. mean you have to stay there. Yes. You, you, yes. you just need yeah. to learn the rules. Yeah. And then you can create your own game. Yeah. And because I, I was, I was corporate for a long time and, and I worked in an office and you know, I wore the tie every day. And, yeah. Um, it spit me out. Sure. It completely spit me out. And that's when the time when I was going really heavy on drugs and alcohol. Sure. I look at it now and I, I think, oh, had I not been hooked on drugs, I would have kept my job. No, the job just didn't want me there. I was so yeah. frustrated and stressed right. out yeah. that I would go home and smoke crack and just right. unwind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crack and unwinding doesn't yeah. seem to it, it the doesn't. same boat. <laughs> It takes somebody who's knowledgeable to know that. Yeah, because I would spend the rest of the night just looking at the peephole in my window or the door. Um, and then I would wake... Then this I, is more entertaining than television. Yeah. And then I would just take a shower and go to work. And I'd be yeah. high. And yeah. I, I didn't function. But it led me to where I am now in the long run. Yeah. Uh, but knowing how that works is how I can get people to support me or sponsor me or yep. help me out. Because yep. I know the game, yeah. but I know how to use my terms yep. to get what I need. And, yeah. and that's not bad, folks. Right. It's not, it's, it's, money and spirituality don't have to be enemies, but they can collaborate. I, I think they go hand in hand, yeah. to, to be quite frank. I think, um, I think that your career as a spiritual seeker is one of the most valuable things that you can dedicate your time to because um, in the true practice of, of a spiritual seeker, you're, 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 you're fine-tuning and, and honing your awareness, right? And, and your awareness just doesn't stop when you're meditating or when you're praying or whatever your spiritual practices are. You are... You're soaking in and becoming one with your environment and everywhere you are. And your awareness is co consciously picking things up. So in this Western culture, majority of our time and our life is spent working. If you want to look at it from a 40-hour week perspective or, you know, whatever. 
majority of our time is in our careers or in our jobs. So make it something you enjoy, make it something that you want to do well at, and make it something that you can feel good about helping others with. And and use that business, use use that as a spiritual practice for yourself. Um, ultimately, I believe to succeed and, and, and become more conscious and raise your awareness to becoming self-realized, liberated, or enlightened, you have to have a certain type of mental structure and, and focus to be able to, th- to completely lose yourself in, in what you're doing and not be attached to those results. And so why not use business as a spiritual practice? Yeah. And so that's that's part of like why I entered the marketing world all over again was to see that, okay, there's something here for me. There's a gift I have and I can help other people understand their business and understand how to create a sustainable structure so that they can spend more time pursuing their own spiritual practices right. while having a self-sustaining business as now, well. Cause so, uh, you just touched on something so interesting. Just because... Like a career, like Mark, let's take you marketing. Yeah. You're good at marketing, but right. you don't quite feel like you belong, but you like it. Yeah. It's okay to go on this journey yeah. and, and find other tools yep. to use and make your 360 back to it. Yeah. Because now you have more experience, you have more knowledge, right. you have more tools under your belt. Totally. And you can see you can see that career choice or that path yeah. in a totally different 100%. set of eyes and, and, and you're like this is what I was missing and yeah. and now I was really I was missing the, the core aspect of wanting to help people and, and right. that's you know every company that you ever work for will say we make the world a better place because we deliver a superior cup of coffee or whatever right, right, right? Yeah. but like you really get down to it like that's just internal marketing you know and, and very few companies actually like services or products actually help solve a problem or make the world a better place. And that and that's totally subjective for person to person, right? Right. That's totally subjective. And I was missing what in my heart I knew I could deliver to help make the world a better place. And so if I have this real mission and this real part of me that wants to help other people I, I want to help others advance in their own practice right. of self discovery. And a part of that in this world is is being able to have resources to do things like money, finances, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that for me is a, is a crucial expression of what I am and who I am and, and helping other people or helping spiritual entrepreneurs develop a sustainable business. Because right? now Taylor Doherty has his niche. Yeah, I have I have my niche, exactly. Yeah, and, and yeah. versus um, all the other marketing in the world, you know, whenever I, whenever I, so right now, so like I said, I've been a freelancer since the beginning of the year. Um, and it's only been in the past month and a half, two months that I've been working with spiritual based entrepreneurs. Um, throughout those first seven, eight months of the year, you know, I was able to deliver results for these small businesses that I was working with, but it was draining. It was a hassle. I didn't like it. And it just like, okay, well maybe not being self-employed is, is the thing, you know? And when I started working with spiritual based entrepreneurs, if it felt like early being like, okay, I have to teach people that know nothing about business or have huge hangups around charging money for services. Yes. And I'm like literally having to like re-coach things that like you, you typically learn in like college or high school or I didn't go to college, but yeah, I think some people did. So, you know, so some like, people learn something there. Yeah. You know, something. And so you have, I, you're, I basically have had to like reteach some like very fundamental things about how, how economies work and how to like charge right. money for things. Right. And I loved it. Like, I absolutely loved it. Like, I had to do the same thing or exercise or worksheet with someone, like, five times. But it was so rewarding to see that growth and development and be like, wow, I have value. It's like, yes, you totally have value. You 100% do. And for (laughs) people listening, when you do energy work or spiritual work, especially in the beginning, it's very hard to charge for that service yeah. because you feel like it's uh, like I did. I'll put myself in the example. I felt I've been giving this gift to do energy work, to do card readings. Yeah. I shouldn't charge for that. 
But then somebody said, but you're charging for your time. Yeah, that's and, what and, you're charging for. And that's human. Yeah. <laughs> and that requires, because you can't just be working for free 40 no. hours a week. No. Because the rent needs to get paid. Exactly. And, uh, you got to eat. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can't trade rent money for, for Reiki. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't. I tried touching my landlord. <laughs> he would not stand still long enough. <laughs> and uh, how many times do you have to feel his, like, Chakras right. to make up the money <laughs> for it. Like, how much is your root He's chakra like, how worth? Is this paying my, yes. you know, my business. Excuse yeah. me, sir. Get your hand off my crotch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't need it. To, I don't need my crotch to be, uh, cleansed. Yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> I feel your cheek. <laughs> and uh, there's a blockage right there. There's a blockage there. right there. It's uh, very, very hard compared what, to the rest of the Why don't you body? step into my apartment and we'll negotiate exactly, this? Right. That just turned into a different story right there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, we, really yeah, let's yeah. bring it back to, to you. Um, I think I've said too much. Um, we're about 10 minutes into the hour. Sure. This is the part of the show where uh, my guest will yeah. say some words of wisdom sure. to my listeners. Uh, so, Taylor Doretti, what words of wisdom would you like to share? Oh, man. Um, well, I hope that roller coaster of a story kind of helped segue into other things, you know? Um, and I, basically what I've learned from my 25 years of living and almost 26 um, is that really the only things that you really need to have in this life in order to become more conscious, to live a fulfilling, successful, happy, prosperous life is to trust yourself and follow your heart. And those two things are some of the hardest things in the world for people to do, especially in this world and especially in this culture, because we don't teach that at all. In fact, we do everything to not teach that. We do everything to suppress that, um, whether it's from an education system, whether it's from a societal and entertainment level. We teach everything but. We say, um, we say, have a, like let's have other people make your decisions for you. You're not smart enough to understand this. Like we, we want people to do everything but trust themselves and follow their heart, you know. And so experiment with life. Don't be afraid to try something new and don't be afraid to step out and, and really own that about yourself. And even if you're not sure it's something you truly want, don't judge that too early. Don't act out of fear. But if there's an interest, a curiosity within you, follow that and, and go as far as you feel necessary to know whether that's for you or not. And so that's, I think, what I could really say to the general group. Yeah. You know, if there's people that want to take that a step further and, and people that want to progress on a spiritual nature and a spiritual path, the three things you need is meditation, a mindfulness practice. Now, that can be... Uh, yoga that can be tai chi that can be painting that could be puzzle like solving puzzles it could be uh, your career like software engineering it, whatever it means something that requires you to be totally focused on whatever is in front of you without allowing your awareness to distract itself and then the third thing is introspective contemplation um, I think that's something that is we don't really spend a lot of time doing um, and that's essentially you self-digesting and understanding your own experiences and perspectives on things so you can journal you can uh, talk to yourself in like an audio recording but spend time going through and unraveling these knots of experiences that are wound up in your mind you know so those those five things follow your heart trust yourself have a meditation practice have a mind practice and introspective contemplation so how <laughs> how do you walk yourself from not trusting yourself to trusting yourself oh uh, fucking up a lot <laughs> <laughs> there you go folks yeah Done. and cut. That, that's why they pay the big bucks <laughs> yeah uh, no, seriously, like you are like you have to mess up a lot and don't be afraid of messing up. You know, don't be afraid of doing the wrong thing. Like I do. I do something wrong every single day. And I'm like, damn it. Like I I kind of knew like there was a thought. There was something that was like this. But my mind's like, no, do this, yeah. <laughs> you know. And so, you know, just don't be afraid. Like 
if you have an intuition or an inclination about something, like, like make note of it. Write it down and then just, if you choose to do the opposite of that, like consciously accept that and release that attachment to that result. Like go into it, you know? If, 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 you're, if, you're, if you feel the urge to wear red today, but you're like, no, nah, I'm going to wear blue because Susie, who I have a crush on, likes blue, so I'm going to wear blue for Susie. And she's like... She compliments someone with a red shirt on, and you're like, "Damn it! Damn I it. knew I was supposed to wear a red shirt." Screw you, Susie! <laughs> exactly, right? Screw you! Right? right? Like, like, just play with it in any capacity that it takes. It's it's really hard, you know. It's really hard to trust yourself. Let but, me give you all some advice. Nobody likes Susie. <laughs> I know. Just, I'm just gonna say it out there. <laughs> you know, but yeah, like just just surrender to it, you know, and and don't be afraid to to make those mistakes awesome. because. Hey, you're here, dream after dream, life after life, day after day, you know, so just do better next time and do your best. So I don't want people to be wondering, how are your, how's your relationship with your parents now? Oh, sure. Uh, it's, go, it's, a lot, it's going a lot better. Um, it wasn't until the past year and a half that it really took me some time to really accept where things were with them and, and understand and accept why they did what they did and and also like take responsibility from from my own actions and perspectives you know like that was a huge thing you know it was like be like okay like maybe i wasn't the best like most respectful t- teenager but you know but that's really what it came down to was was really losing that trigger you know like yeah. talking to them i would just get triggered and be like you did this you know and like that doesn't help me that doesn't help them like that that doesn't heal anything yeah. right and so um you know so now it's like i i just i, I have a relationship with them I, I manage it um and so i I just work with them with where they are, and I see that they're humans and they're hurting just as much as anybody else is. And you know, and so I try to do what I can for them and be there for them in, in whatever capacity that that allows, while 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 staying true to myself at the same time. Yeah. You know, like not not allowing myself to get caught up in whatever situations that they're in, but just trying to really be what I would want somebody to be for me if I was in that situation. Yeah. You know, because at some point. You know, I'm, I'll be 48 this December. Yeah. And I know you're thinking, but you look adorably young. Yeah, I'm, you look I'm, like you're 35. I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you, God. Woke up. And uh, at, at one point in my life, I had to sit back and go, that was me as a teenager. I was a yeah. messy teenager. I was not easily, I was not easy to handle. Yeah, no way. So I have to take responsibility for that. Yeah. Because the way my parents treated me when I was... I still had a curfew when I was 19. Yep, same. So, I, I earned that. Yeah, through whatever. Whatever, through your, I, whatever yeah. choices. Yeah, totally. I would sneak out of my house yeah, to go have sex <laughs> when I was like 16, 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my parents were like, where were you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, and um, I sleepwalk. What do you want me to do? Right. So I so being grounded at nineteen, I totally I totally earned that. So I can't blame yeah. that for on them. Yeah, you have to accept your karma, you know, and 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 some of the karmas that you that you're responsible for. Yeah. So good, good. I'm, I'm, for those of you listening who have been through a story similar to Taylor's, <clears throat> just know that from my perspective, number one, take some t- take some ownership of who you were. Yeah. As it as who you have been all your life, not totally. just as an adult, yeah. but who have you been from the time that you had a sense of right and wrong. Yeah. And then things will be easier because now you understand your parents yep. and you can see them in a different light yeah. and, and really get where they're coming from. Totally. Right? Yep. Like you were a fucked up kid, so we had yeah. to be fucked up parents. Exactly. Like, what do you expect us <laughs> to be? Sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you weren't running away, we wouldn't have put you in the cage. Exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> makes sense. Um, not, I'm not going to... Mr. and Mr. Radio, I'm not saying you put him in a cage. <laughs> it felt like it. Yeah, but... Um, a cage in the heart. He does that on his own now for entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> he I gets, learned it from you. He gets tipped well. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Okay, people are like, is that on, is that on Facebook? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Taylor's ready in a cage. There are pictures of Whip. <laughs> Taylor in a two-piece in a cage on his Facebook. Uh, people are... You're going to get like a thousand yeah, right, requests. Yeah, right. Seriously. There is that picture. Um... In one word, describe yourself. Oh, man. Uh, 
You know, the first word that came to mind was was enigma. Huh. You know, and and ever changing. I think is really more is really more. I think something that that connects with me a little bit more. You know, I've always felt like an enigma. You know, I've always felt like really different from everything else and everyone else. Um, but there's a lot of times where I'm like very predictable and I'm very like consistent and and so but that that doesn't stop you know so ever changing is really something that I resonate with I was once asked if I had a superpower what would it be and I said um, adaptability you know because I can shape shift and morph into whatever is called for and and keep that that liquidity that that um, being able to just take whatever is needed and become that for that moment pretty awesome you know. So, so tell folks yeah. where they can find you. What can you do for them? Um, what your business is and all that. Oh, sure. So um, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Taylor Goretti. Um, it's just my personal stuff for now, uh, personal page. Um, I'm going to be launching a new uh, blog that is uh, both on Instagram and on YouTube um, called The Solopreneur Life. So that will be up in the next uh, week and a half or so, and so I'll be documenting the journey from um, uh, from a freelancer to a um, to a uh, solopreneur, and then to a business uh, business owner. Nice. And so that's kind of how I see the stages: you're an employee, you're an independent contractor, a freelancer, then you're a solopreneur, and then you're eventually a business owner, and you have a team or people working with you. And so I'll be documenting that process for myself. Um, part of what I do, um, all my marketing business has pretty much been referrals and word of mouth. Uh, I do digital marketing and I'm a content creator. So on my Instagram, Taylor Doretti, you can see, uh, some of my photos, some of the videos that I've done. Um, and I offer that to businesses and, um, I'm starting to do, uh, more public, um, coaching and consultations, um, for spiritual based entrepreneurs. So I do branding, marketing, and advertising for spiritual based entrepreneurs. Um, that's kind of the niche that I'm forming, forming. And you'll see a little bit of that through the solopreneur life. And so there will be, uh, more to come with cool. that in the near future. And if people have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. I'm a pretty friendly, approachable guy. So if you guys have questions, you want advice with something, Shoot me a DM, slide in there, and uh, I'll respond. <laughs> so that's kind of way more sexual than it had to be. But uh, for, for those of you, uh, if you're listening or watching this on YouTube, uh, by the time you hear this or, or watch this, his page should be up already. So right. go to the Facebook page for Put It Together Podcast, and you will find his contact information there. So make right. sure you go check that out. Uh for everybody watching or, or listening, uh, my guest today is Taylor Doretti, a uh, <laughs> spiritual marketer. I, that's, that's, that's my word for you. Sure. Yeah, uh, that works. Yeah. Don't let the pretty package fool you. <laughs> There's a whole lot of brain under there. Yeah. Uh, I, I can, I'm, yeah. <laughs> you know, for, for a young guy, I, I'm, I'm really proud of you that, Thank you. that you, at your age, you've been able to both separate and combine material and spiritual yeah. into one and make it work for you right. and help other people find a way to work for them. Thank you. I, I'm very excited to uh, see where you're headed and, and and maybe like a couple years from now revisit this yeah. interview and see where you are then. Totally. Um, really interesting. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm glad we're friends. Yeah, so, me too. Yeah, me too. Pretty, pretty cool guy. Last Again, quick thing. If, if anyone is in the LA area, um, I'll be teaching uh, public meditation over the next couple months. So it's, uh, what is it? It's October 2018. Yeah. So. Um, prior on December, I'll be teaching public workshops and classes, uh, oh. workshops on mysticism and, and, and uh, meditation classes. So Sweet. you guys can also connect with me there if you're interested. In oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the list. Now. Awesome. You are. So 100%. Uh, we'll definitely do some live yeah. meet, uh, interviews That'd for that. That'd be great. I'd love yeah, that. So, yeah, thank you. So if you're, if you're watching this, this will definitely be up before December. So if you're watching this and it's not December yet... <laughs> uh, make sure you connect with either uh, Taylor Doretti's page on Facebook or put it together podcast on Facebook and find the information for the uh, meditation classes yep. and, you, and you will get the information and I will see you guys there. Great. Um, Taylor, thank you so much. Thank you. The show. It's been fun. I've really enjoyed this. Oh, we thank did you. enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, for everybody listening and or watching, 
this is Daniel Garza with Put It Together. My guest today has been Taylor Doretti, which I have named the uh, spiritual marketer. <laughs> Check him out. Uh, find him. Talk to him. Uh, you're going, what is this pretty boy? What is he going to teach us? <laughs> Trust me, I have learned quite a bit from him, and I, I'm sure you will too. Uh, for now, I want to thank my producer, Mr. Kevin Moyers, for all his help and support. Thank you, sir. Inviting everybody, check us out at abnormalentertainment.com where you can find all the shows on the network. You can follow me at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Go check that out uh, at either Daniel G. Garza or Little Mexican. You can find all the information for the shows, things on my guest, things I'm working on, um, and just random pictures. So go check those out. For now, I want to thank uh, Taylor for being on the show. Thank you all for listening and watching. This is Daniel Garza saying, hey, put it together. This is how I... Put it together. This is how I put it together. This is how I put it together. Subscribe to Put It Together on iTunes, Stitcher, and at abnormalentertainment.com slash put it together. Find Put It Together on Facebook and tweet Daniel at Lil Mexican. L-I-L-M-E-S-I-C. A-N. And for more podcasts, comics, books, movies, and more, head to abnormalentertainment.com. You've been listening to the Abnormal Entertainment Network.